fall into a deep sleep in this cozy collection of over three hours of rainy sleep stories and bedtime meditations. You may wish to take a moment to subscribe if you haven't already, so you may return to this story and receive new ones in the future. Tucked safely within the sanctuary of your room where you are warm and dry, you are able to enjoy the sounds of rain and stormy nights portrayed in these six sleep stories. There are so many enchanting places to explore, from the Cotswolds in England to a mystical castle in Scotland, from a laundrette in a city full of artists to a houseboat on a lake, and from a lighthouse to a luxury train. Like a series of dreams, these bedtime tales will help you drift across the bridge from your waking life to your sleeping life. And at any point in any of the stories, you may follow the path to sleep or listen for the next adventure. The choice is yours. Stormy Night in the Cotswolds Journey to the Cotswolds in England where time has cast its beauty upon the golden limestone walls for centuries. And you may find a sense of calm and well-being upon the backdrop of a damp winter's night as a storm begins to brew before you find shelter in a charming bed and breakfast. And I would like to take this time to welcome you to Michelle's Sanctuary. I am Michelle, and as you are listening, you may think of my voice as that of a dear friend and guide who is here to make you feel relaxed and comfortable and truly valued. Because you have earned this time for yourself every day. And to take this moment to honor you and all that you have overcome and all you may set aside to set yourself up for a night of restorative, fulfilling sleep. And this time to rest will allow you to wipe away the slate of yesterday. And should you be holding on to even more than one yesterday, you may work towards wiping away all that no longer serves you from the chain of yesterdays that fall behind you. Being present to right now and understanding that this precious night of sleep will guide you to a new beginning tomorrow where you may seize the day and if only a little bit at a time become adaptable and open to the greatest of possibilities. So get cozy and cuddle up beneath your bedding, tucking it closely underneath your chin if that feels nice. Letting your body release and align every nook and cranny, every joint and curve of your physical body with the softness of your bed as you let go, as you feel heavy, as you relax, taking in a huge sip of night's air before you exhale in a big audible sigh, if that feels good to you. 
And again, just inhale deeply to the deepest cavern of your lower abdomen, letting your belly and chest rise before again you force it all out in a sigh, letting it go, feeling free one last time. You inhale deeply as your chest rises and you sigh it all out. Before you allow yourself to be transported in this calm bedtime story. Know that you may drift away from my voice at any point in this narrative and just fall asleep. This is for your own personal experience and whatever feels right for you as the story progresses on. Whatever you do not experience in your waking life may melt like a vibrant watercolor into your dreaming life. And with your eyelids heavily cast, upon your very tired eyes. They feel like sandbags while acting as a movie screen upon which you may visualize you are walking upon a narrow winding street that glistens with the reflections of quaint limestone cottages that surround it. While the sky above is a steely gray with plum black edged storm clouds that are slowly moving upon the village, the stone homes reflect back in a cinematic golden hue. You have such a sense of place and history. with a deeply rooted feeling in your feet as they step upon the damp pavement. You feel this connection that grounds you in a way that you conjure an idea of what it must be to feel like a centuries old tree that has the deepest of roots. And you do not understand or feel the need to question why you feel so sure that you are in the right place right now. You just accept it and surrender to the beauty that is around you. It feels so good to just go with the flow on this cozy adventure. Your feet are adorned in soft, buttery boots that have a grip with each step and make your feet feel warm and dry. And you are wearing a trench coat that feels like it has a special power, a connection to a person or a memory, or a deep sense of confidence when you wear it. The belt is cinched tightly, like a hug around your waist, and it is in your favorite color and fabric and makes you feel distinguished and comfortable 
at the same time as if it is an extension of your body made only for you and you alone. The village is quite sleepy at this time before twilight, but as you walk by a series of small shops and a bookstore, you notice a few proprietors that give you a smile and friendly wave. You feel so welcomed. You take in the tendrils of ivy plants that grow upon a quaint limestone home. So vibrantly green against the deep amber stone that is weather-worn and has been imprinted with fossils of sea urchins and coral. You carefully run your hand across the stone, feeling flashes of beauty throughout history that come to you with a warm feeling of appreciation. The stone has endured on, and so too have you over time. And you carry the fossils formed by experiences and disappointments and beautiful surprises within you and know that you have prevailed. And while these moments have shaped you and possibly not always been to your hopes or expectations. You have become you through all of this. And you may take this time to appreciate the you that is now, just as you appreciate the quaint historic cottages that are only as they are now because of the weathering of experiences and time. And these imprints are what make the energy of the Cotswolds so charming and warm and inviting. The road begins to narrow and you can smell burning wood, seeing as chimneys emit plumes of smoke from the row of cottages set aglow from within. And as you walk, you glimpse into the windows of one of these storybook homes and see a cat nestled within the sill of a window, her tail wrapped around, with her body curled up so she may use the tip of her tail as a fluffy pillow beneath her chin. She seems so relaxed and content and it gives you a sense of warmth against the cool, damp winter's night air. You inhale and exhale as your breath condenses and forms a cloud before you. You remember the first time you ever saw your own breath and take this moment to play around and to laugh to yourself, smiling as you exhale and watch your own life force 
hit the cool evening air. The sky is getting darker and a breeze begins to whip around the narrow streets as you continue to walk. You give yourself a gentle hug, rubbing your hands against the arms of your trench coat for warmth. The road begins to incline over a rolling hill as you see a strike of lightning in the distance. The rain begins to fall coming down heavier as large drops splat against the surrounding cottages and pavement ahead. They fall upon your face and hair as well. And while cold, they are invigorating in a way that reminds you of your own aliveness. And it feels good to feel alive, to be present. A few more drops fall upon your lips and you lick them and they taste like briny water on a metal spoon. And when you smell the damp air, the minerality of wet stones, and the fragrance of nearby woodlands wafts on the breeze of the damp air that hits your face. And just ahead, you see the bed and breakfast where you are staying. There is a long, narrow driveway, and the incline feels good, but alerts you of your own tiredness that begins to take over. Your body feeling heavy, while you also feel the contentment that follows from a day full of exertion and adventures. You come upon the top of the driveway, which widens beneath an awning and entryway to this grand mansion. You stop for a moment to take in the beauty as lightning shoots across the sky above and illuminates the outline of the peaked roofs and deep purple black storm clouds. You have arrived just in time. You enter the main door to be instantly greeted by the friendly innkeeper whose family has maintained this charming inn for generations. Her welcome is as warm as the wave of air that hits the cool outside air as the door opens and then closes behind you. She takes your trench coat and hangs it upon a mahogany coat rack in the entryway. She gestures to an antique marble table upon which a pot of tea is waiting with some biscuits and a small place card that has your name and read. We are delighted you chose to stay with us. Please make yourself at home. 
you smile and pour yourself a cup and fix it to your preferences and then take one of the biscuits as she asks if you are in need of anything for the night. You inform her that you are just fine and ready to rest. And so you continue towards the grand mahogany staircase that is covered with a luxurious sapphire and ivory patterned rug. And as you walk upon it, ascending one step at a time, you feel as if you are floating upon the crest of waves of the sea. Your bleary arms and tired body feel heavier with each step as you ascend, one step at a time, counting as you go. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And you come upon the landing and turn towards your room. Walking down the long hallway as the sound of the rain intensifies. As it pounds upon the roof and the windows that lined the wall. You come upon the heavy wooden door of your room and insert the skeleton key that dangles from a tasseled keychain into the lock, listening as it clicks and the door opens upon your cozy room. A fire glows in the fireplace as the wood crackles and pops. You walk towards an antique end table and armchair, finishing your biscuit and taking a few last sips of your tea before placing it down. A bathrobe is resting upon a bench that stands near the end of a canopy bed made of hand-carved wood. The wood has delicate swirls that invite you to come over and gracefully run your hand against the glossy, smooth coolness. You remove your clothing and put on the plush bathrobe, tying the belt around you before getting comfortable beneath the covers. You walk to the church style windows that peek beneath the ceiling and nearly end at the wooden floor. You look out to watch the raindrops cascading down the colorful stained glass panes like tears of joy. The golden warm light of the fire reflects on the windows and refracts the raindrops into prisms that hypnotize you momentarily. 
Thunder rolls in the distance. The pelts of rain have a gentle rhythm that lulls you into a trance state. So heavy and tired, you peel yourself away from the window and approach the high canopy bed going underneath the hand-sewn quilt made with patches of soft and colorful cotton. The sky continues to light up in flashes of silver and white and the thunder rolls through the grassy hills roll around the estate like soft waves of dark green. Your eyelids close heavily upon your eyes as you sink deeper and deeper down, ready to drift off to sleep, inhaling Sighing it out, going deeper and deeper within, and drifting to sleep, or drifting to another land, if that is what you choose. The Mystical Castle in Scotland. While you are comfortable in your bed, beneath the weight of your bedding, you breathe as easily as a sleeping child. You inhale and exhale. It is suddenly cooler and damp, and you feel a cool mist land on your relaxed lips. The silvery mist forms a cloud around your bed and is a gateway to another world. Your breath is the vehicle, and you are the driver. And when you exhale again, you're suddenly floating through time and space to a seaside cliff of Scotland. Your feet step upon the lush emerald green blanket of dewy grass that ebbs and flows through the rolling landscape that spans beyond your sight. The vibrant shades of green contrast the dusty gray sky in which puffy lavender clouds drift in from the sea. Further out at sea, the underbellies of the clouds are an ominous charcoal gray and worn of a storm on its way. But for now you have time to enjoy the last of the daylight hours before the rain begins. You inhale deeply and the salty seaside air marries the fragrant sweet aroma of the wet grass. Your feet are adorned in lace-up boots that keep your toes dry and warm from the wet earth upon which each step leaves a small imprint. And as you walk, you feel more and more relaxed and in tune with the surrounding beauty. Your mind is so still you feel as if you are an observer in a dream or a witness to a movie of your own life. This distance allows you to experience the world around you with a heightened awareness and appreciation. The sea is a soft whisper carried on the cool breeze that causes your breath to condense. 
You are wrapped in a heavy trench coat that hugs around your waist and a scarf that keeps your neck warm and comfortable. The cool, clean air is refreshing and gives you a sense of relaxation one feels when immersed in the fresh air of the countryside. There is a forest at the edge of the sprawling property, abundant with feathery pine trees that point towards the sky and narrow peaks. You hear an unusual sound as you get closer to the edge of the greenscape. The smell of pine reaches your nose and soothes you internally when you take in a deep breath. A wide patch of Kelly green moss stands out like a sandbar surrounded by fallen pine needles. You see a majestic grouse known as a capercaille. His shiny ebony tail is like a Japanese silk hand fan with white swatches that appear to be hand painted in quick, sharp brush strokes. He sings out to you with a gurgle and sound of a cork popping off a champagne bottle on the strike of midnight on a new year. His neck and chest are an iridescent deep shade of green and nature's thick stroke of red eyeliner rises above his eyes. With his head raised, his yellow beak curves towards the sky and looks like the beak of a bird of prey. You meet his eyes and he continues his song, once again directing his beak towards the sky. And you imagine he is warning of the storm on the way. You softly smile and nod slowly, communicating and understanding. Once abundant in Ireland and Scotland, the copper Cayley is now an endangered breed. In his presence, you feel tied to the history of the land, envisioning the days when these birds were abundant and the world was quite different. You feel connected to the land and its history, its trials through time that have landed to the here and now. A sanctuary of sorts for you and the Capricale, nestled within the glorious span on the Scottish Highlands. The Capricale turns from you and dashes into the woods. And you look to the stormy skies and decide to return to the castle. You walk along the rolling hills of the property and near the edge of a sea cliff. You open your mouth and yawn and taste the salty mist on your lips before you rise and sigh. You open your mouth and yawn and taste the salty mist on your lips before you let out a sigh. You watch the waves roll in. With an intense purpose, they slap against the rocks that surround the beach cove. And for a moment, you see how nature gives you permission to feel. The raging waves give an assurance that at times it is okay to feel stormy. The delicate rains that fall over the sea and begin to move towards land 
give you permission to cry, to let go of all that you are holding. When you feel full of emotions that need release, you may think of these voluminous clouds, ready to pour rain onto the earth. The clouds, the sea, the land. Do not hold a grudge and cast judgment when these naturally occurring things happen. This idea inspires you to let go of judgment when you ride the wave of emotions that come with being human and being part of an ever-changing landscape. You look back towards the greenery behind you before you turn your attention towards the pink sandstone walls of the castle up ahead. The walls appear more vibrant and saturated in color in contrast to the dark grays and purples of the incoming storm. A fog is slithering in like a chiffon scarf coating the land in a white cast, and you see its gradual movement towards land. You walk towards the castle along the coastline, and soon find you are within the embrace of the fog. You can still make out the two turrets of the castle that rise above the massive structure and house bedrooms that offer coastal views like the top of a lighthouse on a clear day you can almost see forever. In this peaceful solitude in the mystical fog the constraints of time seem to disappear. For you could be anywhere in time and history now. Like in a dream, the lushness of the landscape and vividness of the experience is timeless. You approach a windy stone path that leads to the entrance of the five-story castle that is now wrapped in silvery white fog. You hear your feet crunch on the tiny pebbles as the first drops of rain begin to fall and splat against the earth. You look forward to the dry warmth that awaits you in the castle's historic walls. The staff is on hand waiting for you and has served the property for decades with love and care. They are like family and carefully tend to your needs. You come to the front of the castle as darkness sets in. There are two lanterns, one on each side of the main entrance, and the flames within burn brightly and illuminate the outline of the door. Even beneath the blanket of fog, you can make out the orange marmalade glow and flickering flames that burn brightly within the protective glass enclosures. You take in a deep breath as you open the oversized door. Royalty and the most creative and brilliant of minds throughout history enter through the same opening into the renowned castle as you enter the doorway, 
It's as if you can see the door opening through the years and the brilliant souls who graced through it. They appear like holograms, like spirits traveling on the fog, rushing into the safety of the stone dwelling. It soothes you to sense them, to know how many brave souls have thrived throughout history in the sanctuary of this castle. The entrance leads to a foyer with antique furnishings and modern conveniences that honor history but provide a sense of modern comforts. In the 15th century, the castle was drafty and cool, but is now dry and toasty. You relish the sensation of the wave of warm air enveloping you. A fluffy, white, long-haired cat named Basil dashes down the grand staircase to meet you. As always, she anticipates your return and rubs up against your legs, purring affectionately. The head of housekeeping greets you. She arrives with monogrammed slippers and a velvet scarlet robe. She removes your coat and scarf and takes your wet boots as Basil weaves between both of your legs. She helps you into slippers and the robe, and you thank her before she leaves to tend to your wet belongings. On nights like this, you often like to wander the rooms of the castle, listening to how different the rain sounds in various wings. Two staircases begin at the base of the foyer and wind towards the second floor ballroom, forming a heart shape as they ascend. You take the stone stairs, feeling the smooth mahogany handrail beneath your palm. Basil races ahead, owning the castle with each confident step of her furry paws. She knows every cranny and hiding spot in the castle's 75 rooms. The rose-hued stone walls are illuminated by glass lanterns containing antique light bulbs. They cast the stairs in an amber hue, and you feel as if you are floating through honey when you walk through the soft light. You come to a sapphire blue carpet on the landing and feel your slippered feet sink into it. It feels as plush as the moss where the capricaylee sang, and you relish the sensation. There are six double doors that are more than three times your height and expand towards the high archways of the domed ceiling. You open one of the heavy doors hearing it softly creak as you enter the ballroom. It is dimly lit by a series of three chandeliers that cause the light to reflect like illuminated petals scattered across the dark, checkered floor. Basil runs to the center of the dance floor and rolls onto her back, comfortable and playful. Windows run from the floor to the ceiling, surrounded by rich purple satin drapes that grace the floor. 
Black silk wallpaper covers the walls in textured floral designs. You walk to the windows and look out onto the darkness of the night. You see lightning dance across the dark sea. These flashes of light briefly fill the warmly lit room with cooler hues of white. Rain cascades down the multi-paned windows, trickling around the intricate metal grids, around each pane of glass. You look to the clear drops that are slightly tinted silvery blue and take in their beauty before you close your eyes and just listen. The sounds of the rain padding on the sill and the sounds of the trickling streams of water soothes you and you feel your own fluidity, the flow of your body as you travel through the castle with ease. You open your eyes and gracefully walk to the center of the ballroom and stand beneath the middle chandelier. You look up to it and magically within each crystal you see a ball that was hosted at the castle over time. You see happy guests and orchestras playing. You admire the fashionable attire of the guests with each crystal representing a different year and time. Going back centuries, you admire the corseted gowns and regal attire of the guests and you watch as attendees waltz around the room. In another crystal, you see a party in the mid 20th century and a woman in a red gown dancing with a dapper gentleman who leads her confidently across the very checkered floor where you now stand and Basil rolls about. Your imagination is invoked the dances and joyous occasions over time have seeped into the walls of the castle and you can feel the reverberations like warm comforting waves that caress and soothe you with a softness in your body you walk towards an exit that leads into a library with Basil prancing behind you. Original books from heralded authors line the shelves that run from the floor to the ceiling. The ceiling is so high that a ladder on wheels is fixed to a track that runs around the perimeter of the room. Basil runs to the ladder and rubs her face against the lowest of the smooth wooden rungs. You envision the joyous fun to come from being pushed around the room on this ladder, imagining you could absorb the wisdom of the millions of words captured on these pages through time. The room smells of old books sweet, musky, decadent, muted aroma weaves with the fragrance of the wood burning in the lofty, large fireplace. You take a seat on a teal velvet settee and listen to the fire crackle and the rain that falls outside the window. Basil scurries towards you and jumps onto the settee, 
she curls up alongside you and rests her head on your lap, purring contentedly. A staff member has left a silver tray on an antique end table. It contains a silver pot of freshly steeped tea that you pour into a delicate porcelain teacup. The botanical fragrance of the brew meets your nose in a cloud of steam and you inhale it before you sigh out your breath. You feel more relaxed than you have felt in a very long time. There is a lightness in your lungs and your heart center as if the knots of stress that grew over time have been untied and released like the rain now released from the storm clouds. You feel cozy, tucked in the heart of the plush seti and the velvet robe. With the tea fixed to your liking, you bring the cup to your lips and enjoy the smooth edge of it. Your lips are instantly warmed by the tea and you feel the silky liquid cascade down your throat. You look up to the seemingly endless rows of books, admiring the weathered burgundy and green and royal blue and black spines. You feel blessed to have access to all this wisdom gathered through time with words and stories that comfort you in times of your own struggle and growth. They let you know that you are not alone and you may prevail. Creating the most enjoyable personal story for you because you are the writer and storyteller of your own life. You finish the tea and rise, ready to retire for the night. You exit the library to a long dark hallway with a cool stone floor that is covered by a marine blue runner In the bleary haze of tiredness, the carpet reminds you of a babbling blue stream flowing over a bed of rocks. You come to the stairwell of the north wing, which has the best views of the sea, and you climb the winding stone stairs up three flights. Your fluffy feline companion runs ahead, her soft feet pattering on the stairs. You feel the tiredness in your body the more you climb. Do you appreciate your feet that have carried you through this day and through this life as you ascend up and up? And further up, you arrive at the top floor. The halls are warmer and cheerier in decor. A thick cream colored rug runs the length of the hallway. Atop the blonde wood flooring. Like a puffy cloud, it conjures thoughts of slumber and peace. When you open the doors, you enter a room that meets your fanciest of desires. Basil softly sprints into the suite. A fire is burning vibrantly in the cream-hued marble fireplace. The golden flames flicker and dance on the opulent walls. There is a canopy bed in the center of the suite. 
with drapes and bedding in the colors you find most tranquil. Your feline companion jumps onto the high bed and cuddles into a pillow. An antique sapphire blue glass lamp sits on a sculpted marble bed table and casts the room in marine tones. The gilded light from the fire marries the blue light and reminds you of summery days at sea when the sun reflects off the blue waters. There is a nook in the suite with an armchair and throw blanket. This chair is positioned perfectly by the window. It's the ideal place to meditate in the morning and to read and journal at night. Turquoise velvet drapes hang around the bow windows curve out over the sea cliffs. You look below to see the crashing waves, made out only by the white crests that reflect the lightning flashing across the sea. You listen to the rain continue to fall and feel enchanted by the hypnotic rhythm listening to one drop at a time. The rolling thunder sounds like the deep tones of a softly played timpani. Nature's orchestra plays on outside the castle and the romantic setting of the Scottish Highlands. You draw the heavy curtains closed, feeling their buttery soft texture in your hands as they block out the sound and the light flashing outside. This action makes the suite feel like a cozy den, perfect for slumber. You change into a pair of satin pajamas that have been draped over the bed. The silky fabric feels luxurious against your skin. And you peel back the heavy bedspread and cool cotton sheets. You climb into the bed and turn off the light as you snuggle next to the purring fluffy kitty. There is a vase of dried lavender sprigs on the bedside table and the sleep inducing aroma helps you relax further as you take in a deep breath and sigh it out. Fire crackles and pops and the stormy winds blow against the castle castle that has survived many a storm and siege and always offered safety and warmth and protection within its stone walls. You close your eyes to feel your head sink deeper into the plush pillows. Going down, down, down. Drifting towards sleep and magical dreams are drifting on the words to come in the next story. The choice is yours. The Cozy Launderette. Many decades past, there was a city where people would flock to when they wanted to discover themselves, full of artists and dreamers, people came from all over the world to learn and to explore. Without judgment, they could be true to themselves. 
and it is this desire to be the greatest expression of yourself that leads you to the slick city sidewalks on a rainy night. You walk on a narrow, dark street lit by old-fashioned street lamps and the occasional headlights of a yellow cab. Your rain boots slosh in the puddles that form on the concrete like melted mirrors. Ripples are created by silvery drops that land in the ebony pools of rainwater. It is late in the night and a mist covers the city like gray gossamer beneath the protection of your umbrella. You feel the soft, cool mist on your face and it collects like morning dew on the grass of the nearby park. In the city, one may be alone and yet never feel lonely. The pre-war brownstones that line your block are occupied by families and young workers, by people who have come from countries in search of new beginnings, and by those who have spent decades drawn to the energy of the city and call it their forever home. In one of the brownstones, there is a bow window illuminated by candles that flicker inside the apartment. You see a pianist seated at a mahogany upright piano with a pencil behind their ear as they compose melodies and string together lyrics in a burst of creativity that often arrives at night. When the city becomes quiet, the artists may dream and make sense of the world when their creativity has no bounds. Across the narrow street, you see an older man in a khaki trench coat and an olivaceous rain hat. He walks a gray and white wire-haired terrier that has little interest in being out in the steady rain. You smile and wave, and he nods in return. The street ends in the park that is green and vibrant in the daylight hours of spring, but now looks like a shadow land illuminated by the bleary golden light of street lamps dappled along a walking path. The street is charming and has block parties in the summer. It is the most decorated street in the city when it comes time for Halloween and winter holidays. This effort of care for your block makes all who visit feel that they are welcome, part of a family and community. It reminds you how important it is to care and to find ways to show it because these efforts may be far-reaching beyond your comprehension. You take in a deep breath and smell the flinty aroma of wet sidewalks as you come to the staircase that leads to your brownstone. The wide stone banister flows from the entryway to the glistening sidewalk like an ocean wave. The building was constructed at a time in history when details were important. Beautiful scrolls are part of the design in the banister and stairs. You pause beneath a street lamp for a moment and look up towards the raindrops as they fall like tiny silvery blue petals from the purple black skies. You take in a deep breath and appreciate the quietude of this rainy night as millions of souls that inhabit the city are now fast asleep. 
You hurry up the stairs, knowing that in a short while the laundry club will convene in the cozy basement with what has become a weekly gathering. You unlock the front door and pass by a wall of mailboxes. You look at your name written in delicate cursive loops by the landlady and take a tiny brass key to open the box. You discover a postcard sent from a loved one that's traveled through time and space. Perhaps it's someone you have not heard from in some time. On the back, written in vibrant blue ink, you read, Wish you were here. Miss you and think of you often. You run your finger across the indented words to feel a warmth in your heart as your lips turn into a smile. No matter the distance, love is a connector that may always be conjured with a kind thought. You close the mailbox and unlock the second heavy wooden door that has a large stained glass window the mosaic is composed of vibrant glass and hues of sapphire, emerald, marmalade, and purple. You open the door and enter the carpeted foyer and place your umbrella in an antique bronze stand that houses other dripping umbrellas from your neighbors. You walk up the creaky wooden stairs to your second floor apartment stairwell smells of home, of baked bread and pastries that were made by Madeline, a young and aspirational baker who caters for the weekly meeting of the laundry club by testing new recipes. There are two apartments on every floor and you walk past her apartment door to your own. You insert the key and it clicks as you open the door and are greeted by your pet. You remove your wet boots and leave them on a doormat in the hallway and then slide your feet into a pair of plush slippers. Your pet yawns, slowly awakening as they come up and brush against your leg. You bury your cool hand into their soft, warm fur and they wiggle with contentment. The apartment, like every room in the old building, has a fireplace, an exposed brick wall. The wide windows look out onto a courtyard with various gardens in full bloom and outdoor tables and benches that belong to all the different buildings on the block. Come summer, there will be lanterns strung throughout that glow in a rainbow of colors. But tonight, the courtyard echoes the soft sounds of rain falling and splatting into puddles that shine like pools of oil. Your pet jumps on the sofa and snuggles into the pillows, falling back to sleep. The apartment is designed to your dream preferences. It's a quaint one bedroom with high ceilings and colors that soothe you. Every time you return to it, and especially on nights with inclement weather, you are filled with gratitude for the cozy dwelling you call home. You look at your watch and it is fast approaching 11 p.m. You grab your sack of dirty laundry. Your bed is now bare as you had stripped it in the morning in preparation for tonight's meeting. You whisper to your pet that you will return in a bit 
and then turn off the lights and exit your apartment. You walk down the creaking steps that have a familiar rhythm that conjures a homey feeling. You know the common areas of this charming brownstone almost as well as you know your own body. You have walked through the halls and down the stairs so many times that you have memorized every detail. The burgundy silk wallpaper etched with gold damask patterns meets the mahogany wood paneling that runs midway up the walls. You often think of the lives that have occupied these halls before you and this feeling of home that you share with them. You feel the weight of the sack on your back and appreciate your body for its strength and ability to do these simple things. Gratitude weaves in and out of every day so that nothing is taken for granted. You approach the stairs that lead to the cavernous hall of the basement. You walk by a window where the rain slithers down the glass pane. It makes a soft dripping sound. You descend the stairs and are met by the fragrance of clean laundry. You hear the soft drum of the dryers in motion and the murmurs of your neighbors who have already convened. You open the wooden door into the laundrette and find that nearly everyone has arrived. The room itself is large and occupies more than half of the basement. There are plush, jewel-toned velvet chairs and an antique sofa that rests against an exposed brick wall. A rush of warm, fragrant air wraps around you like a generous hug. It smells of spring-scented fabric softener and hot tea. The room is lit by the warm glow of cast-iron wall lamps and stained glass Tiffany lamps placed on accent tables around the room. You see Dorothy seated in her usual spot next to a round wooden table with a tea set and a plate of fresh pastries that Madeline, the young and energetic baker, has made for the gathering. Dorothy smiles when she sees you and encourages you to settle while she fixes the cup of tea to your liking. Tom, a middle-aged writer who has had his poems read at all the hippest downtown cafes, is seated near an overflowing bookshelf that has become the building's library. The sweet smell of old books often perfumes the room when the laundry machines are not in use as the smell of fresh laundry tends to overpower the book smell. You approach an empty washing machine and remove the bottle of your favorite detergent from your laundry sack. You fill the machine with your linens and clothing and submerge them in a cap full of detergent before you close the door. You then grab a few coins from a pocket in the bag and start the machine. You look through the circular glass door as the water fills the machine and streaks down the window much like the steady sheet of rain that falls down the windows in the laundry room. The machine makes a whirling sound as it spins. As often is the case, the hypnotic spin and watching the suds begin to form is soothing and entrancing. You feel satisfied when the basin is full of water and suds 
and the fabric become like a braided round pretzel as they spin in a clockwise motion. You listen as Charlie, the building's super, enters the room. He's still dressed in his navy blue uniform. His eyes always sparkle when he puts on his charm and his face erupts in a warm smile. For decades, he has been reliable in times of catastrophic need or even for simple moments when a light bulb needs changing. You are the newest member of the laundry club, and yet every person in this room feels like a dear old friend or family member looking after you. Madeline enters the laundrette, dressed in a paisley dress and enthusiastically brings you a Danish that is still warm from the oven, along with a cup of tea prepared by Dorothy. You thank her and settle into a plush velvet chair. The small of your back rests against a soft pillow made by Dorothy. Everyone to have used this special space over time has left behind their mark by leaving books, furnishings, artwork, and records to play. Madeline goes over to the antique record player and removes an album from a sleeve. She sets it on the turnstile and you hear the needle softly crack before the song that fits the perfect mood of the room begins to play. All of you come together with a mutual desire to relax and enjoy the cozy respite in the laundrette each week. Each gathering feels like a meditation. Everyone comes to this room as their most authentic self because it is a safe place to be real and honest and be met with compassion and understanding. Here you can sigh and let down your guard and free yourself from all the expectations of the outside world. Within the exposed brick walls, you may renew yourself as your most beloved articles of clothing and fabrics are renewed in the wash. Charlie and Madeline sit atop the dryers with their legs dangling over the vibrating doors. And like an elegant dance, the moments of the gathering blend together in a way that you do not realize the passage of time crackling of the record and softly falling rain add to the symphony of sound created by the washing machines swooshing and the humming melody of the dryer. You sip the tea and feel the silky warm beverage cascade down your throat like the clean, warm water now cascades down the glass door of the washing machine in the final rinse cycle. You notice how everyone in the room takes an audible sigh together when Tom asks Dorothy to read his selected poem for the week. It's not a sigh of judgment, but of deep relaxation. Dorothy adjusts her glasses and wipes away a wisp of silvery white hair from her forehead that has fallen from her loose bun. She takes the passage in her hand and the room silences before the softly playing music, sounds of the machines and trickling rain. 
Dorothy clears her throat and her motherly voice begins to read. Home and Love by Robert William Serviss. Just home and love. The words are small. Four little letters unto each. And you will not find in all the wide and gracious range of speech two more so tenderly complete. When angels talk in heaven above, I'm sure they have no words more sweet than home and love. Her teary hazel eyes reveal gratitude and warmth. Having made it to her 80th year, it is this communal gathering that reminds her she is so lucky to have both home in love, and how it came together in a way she could have never anticipated or planned. After a beat, the washer turns off, and you rise to remove your wet belongings from the machine and transport them to a vacant dryer. You inhale the fragrance of the cool, damp garments as you place them into the dryer. Now heavy, they will soon be made light and fluffy. This is a reminder that with a little help and intention, circumstances may change in a short while. This applies to your life as well. And even with these changes, the core of you is still the same. As the night approaches the midnight hour, the members of the laundry club become tired and more quiet. Tom falls asleep in the chair with a book in his lap. You and the remaining waking members of the club softly laugh and warmly smile in his direction. Only crumbs remain on the plate once abundant with pastries. The last drops of tea have been poured and consumed. Dorothy's load is finished, and you help her gather her items from the dryer. Madeline helps her fold them, and once complete, she says it's time for her to retire. Ever so helpful, Charlie carries Dorothy's bag and leads her to her apartment as he says goodnight. Madeline awakens Tom and he stirs before rising and saying goodnight as well. You and Madeline remain and clean up the dishes while the dryer finishes drying your garments. The room now tidied, you return to the dryer as it slows to a stop. You open the door and inhale the fragrant hot air. You remove towels and sheets and bedding and pajamas and a few articles of clothing from the hot metal drum. You engage in one of your most pleasing habits by bringing the warm towel to your face and inhaling the fresh laundry scent. The warm, soft fabric feels so good against your skin. You take it away and fold it along with the articles that you will not need on this rainy night. You place them neatly in the laundry sack. The routine of folding gives you a sense of accomplishment. So it's so soothing to see the transformation that occurs. It's amazing how such an easy task can give such a feeling. The once dirtied items are now warm, fragrant, 
Madeline says goodnight as she collects her clean laundry and returns to her apartment. You fill your bag with the rest of your clean linens and then switch off the lamps around the room. Now led through the shadows by the soft lights that shine in from outside the window. You walk through the room and then close the door behind you. You ascend the steps to the first floor, feeling tired and quite sluggish. Your arms and legs feel a slight burn with each step, and you count your ascent to the second floor. One, two, three, Four, five, six. You readjust the bag on your back and continue up the final steps. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Top of the stairs, you once again walk past Madeline's apartment and enter your own. You close the door behind you and relish the gentle click of the lock because the sound means you are now tucked away from the world for the night. Safe, serene. Your sleepy pet follows you into the bedroom where you put away your garments in an antique armoire. You feel the cool, smooth door and brass handle as you gently close it. You change out of your clothes and into flannel pajamas that are still warm from the dryer. The storm outside intensifies and the rain comes down more steadily you feel all the more grateful to be dry and comfortable and warm indoors. You grab the sheets and quilt from the laundry bag and make your bed. You smooth out the warm cotton fitted sheet onto the plush mattress and then put the downy pillows into clean pillowcases. Your pet is eagerly at your feet, awaiting the chance to cuddle in the warm bedding. You finish making the bed and retreat to your bathroom with the freshly folded towels beneath your arm. You place them on a shelf and brush your teeth and wash your face one point you felt so tired that you considered skipping this nightly ritual. But when you brush your teeth and feel the minty tingle and gentle massage of your gums, it relaxes you and signals to your body it is time to retire for the night. You splash your face with warm water over the white porcelain sink. You clean yourself of the day. You cleanse yourself with your favorite soap and then rinse away the suds. You bury your face into the fresh clean towel for the second time on this night. And it soothes you even more than the first. Everything about this experience feels renewing and clean and full of self-care. You take in a deep breath and sigh as you hang up the towel on a brass hook behind the heavy white wooden door. You walk through the shadows of your apartment that is now illuminated by the lights of the courtyard. 
and you retreat to the dark sanctuary of your bedroom. When you arrive, your pet has already snuggled beneath the covers on their side of the bed. You pull back the quilt and top sheet and sink into the plush mattress. Every deep breath and inhalation of the clean laundry brings you back to memories and the love that you have shared in the small basement launderette. Your head sinks into the clean pillows. Your head sinks into the clean pillows and you close your eyes. The rain patters against the window that is behind your headboard. The street is quiet before the occasional sound of tires rolling atop the slick pavement, splashing in puddles. You feel the warm, furry body of your pet who has snuggled against you and you drift between the soothing moment and the sweet, Calling of sleep, letting go, surrendering to the comforts of the night, and like a cape around you, these feelings of love and connection are your superpowers that will enliven your dreams as you sleep through the night. Relax. Carefree and nestled in a soft and well deserved moment. You may fall asleep or float on the words to come in the next story. The houseboat. You inhale and exhale. You follow your breath to a wooden boardwalk where dry sand blows across the planks like scattered gold dust. A storm is on the way and the news media outlets have been warning of it all week. Tourists and visitors ended their vacations early and most have returned home. The latest forecast called for high winds and heavy rain with no need to evacuate the shore. You've come to the beach to watch the transition from clear blue skies of a perfect summer afternoon to the foreboding plum gray storm clouds that now roll in. Tiny grains of sand blow against your bare feet and ankles. You balance a pair of flip-flops on your index finger and hold a dog leash around the heart of your palm. You walk down the steps of the boardwalk and inhale the humid ocean air that carries a rich smell of salt and dried seaweed. The beach is scattered with shells and remnants of marine life brought by the morning surge at high tide. It's as if the ocean always knows first what is about to come. Van Gogh once wrote that there is peace even in the storm. You find that peace now in the gentle calm before the wind's rage and deluge begins. Yet you know a deeper peace waits for you when the storm arrives with the insistence that you take care of yourself. So often in the modern world, importance is given to things that do not deserve the level of attention they receive. But when a storm comes in, the urgency is deserved. And it comes bearing a universal message to seek shelter. The only priority you have this afternoon is to stay safe and cozy. All other cares and needs are postponed for another time. The certainty in this brings peace. 
A silvery gray mist hovers over the wet sand where the white crested waves thunderously crash down on the beach. Even from a distance, you can feel their force shaking the earth with each new wave. As far as you can see, the sea green waves are dappled with lacy white caps. While the high waves roll in towards you, smaller waves run horizontally across the shoreline like live wires. This may be the first time you ever noticed the varying directions of the surf. It's as if every wave has decided to do what it feels like. This freedom gives you the same desire to do what you feel like. You unleash your puff and find a small piece of driftwood that you launch towards the lavender gray sky. Your dog gallops across the beach to fetch it and proudly returns with a mouth covered in sand and droplets of seawater dripping from her fuzzy chin. When you stand still, the wet sand travels between your toes and sucks your feet until it rises to your ankles. You welcome the sensation of feeling grounded and connected to the moment. The wind begins to change, no longer hot and humid, as there is a cool reprieve, like a whisper that warns of the storm's approach you take heed and call to your pup. The only other soul on the beach is a local surfer named Tom. He lives for stormy days when the sea is rough and waves are rife for surfing. Nothing comes between him and his board as he dares the raging tides to remind him of his mortality. Storms remind you of impermanence. They affirm that even the storms of your life will pass. They offer you a chance to claim your resilience. A bright ray of sunlight cuts through the quickly moving plum gray storm clouds for what will be the last time before darkness prevails. It shines on your face and makes a golden pathway of light in the direction you are walking. You step in the light and your dog walks by your side. The first fat drops of rain begin to fall and they feel cold and clean when they land on your lips. Tom rides his board to the shore and gracefully yet swiftly picks it up and tucks it under his arm. He shakes his head and salt water droplets fly off his long locks of sun bleached hair. He waves towards you and shouts over the surf. See you on the other side of the storm. You watch him jubilantly run towards the boardwalk. You follow behind and climb the steps to the elevated platform. The sun is now hidden behind the storm clouds and you walk towards your home. Your home is already equipped with all the necessary items to weather the storm and even a few treats to reward yourself. You walk by the historic homes that have survived tropical storms and hurricanes for over a century. Some are poised on stilts, having been raised over time to withstand the storm surges and high surf. The pastel houses are stacked close together like an array of colored eggs nestled in a carton. 
quaint bungalows dapple the ocean walk. Their brown wood facades have grayed in the salt air. White paint blows in the wind on an old cottage, like tattered pieces of paper. And while the home could use a fresh coat of paint, you find charm in its imperfections. Your elderly neighbor, Elise, walks outside your home with her tiny dog. A longtime widow, she's been like a grandmother to you, as her own family lives far away. You often spend hours sipping lemonade on her porch and planting fruits and vegetables in her raised box garden. The winds are picking up and the palm trees rustle with a shush that sounds like the surf. You approach Elise and your dogs greet one another. You ask if she is prepared for the storm. I'm always ready, she responds. The fiery glint in her green eyes is as dazzling as it was when she was a teen. Elise is a pillar of the community a constant reminder to you of what is permanent and what may change through time. Her loving, fierce spirit endures on. She retreats to her bungalow next door and you watch her slowly yet methodically navigate the wind and wet sidewalk. Elise is the only person in town to routinely close the shutters on her home with the smallest hint of a storm. All the homes on Ocean Walk have a vibrant array of shutters that feel old-timey. The rain comes down steadily and feels icy as it lands on your cotton attire and bare arms. The deluge has begun. You run towards your home, and your pup eagerly picks up her stride. Your historic beach house is designed to your preferences, inspired by the dreams you had as a young child of where you would one day live. You reach the porch just as the wind whips down the lane and loose palm fronds speed across newly formed puddles like sailboats taken out to sea. The stormy, dark underbellies of incoming clouds is purple-black and illuminated by flashes of lightning. You feel a tangible excitement, like sparks firing through your veins and causing your scalp to tingle. The storm brings humility and a reminder that you are alive. The rain pelts on the roof of the porch as you unlock the front door and enter your house. The interior is lofty and beach themed with high ceilings and windows that look out on the ocean. You grab a towel from the foyer and dry off your pup. You enter the kitchen to feed her and fill her bowl with fresh water. The first rumble of thunder breaks her attention from the food. She turns to look at you with loving, trusting eyes. She knows so long as she is with you she is safe. You feel a warmth in your heart and smile. This exchange, looking in your pup's eyes, releases oxytocin in both of you. This hormone known as the love hormone or cuddle hormone makes you both feel joyous. You walk through the living room beneath the high, exposed white beams of the cathedral ceiling. 
photos and knickknacks decorate the space and remind you of happy memories at the beach. You feel a chill and go to the bathroom to take a quick shower and wash away the salt and sand. The bathroom has been updated and it's modern and clean with a glass-walled rainfall shower. You turn on the water and steam begins to fill the bathroom. Your pup joins you cuddling on a bath mat by the door as your protector. You undress and step beneath the rainfall shower, feeling the warm droplets cascade down your scalp and neck and over your shoulders. They softly massage you and goosebumps form on your sun-kissed summer skin. You lather soap that smells of lemongrass, made locally by an artisan who sells soaps and lotions by the local pier. You inhale the clean, soothing aroma and tilt your head back. Clean water flows over your face and you still taste a bit of salt from the ocean mist that landed on your skin. You wash away the soap, close your eyes to better enjoy the soothing heat that streams over your tired body. You inhale deeply and relish the simple, captivating pleasure, sensations, and the smells before you turn off the shower. You wrap yourself in a plush towel and dry off while your pup licks the shower water off your toes. It feels so good to be clean and warm. You change into soft bedclothes of your choice that are neatly hung on the back of the door. You return to the living room and watch the rain cascade down the windows. The water flows down steadily and reminds you of being in the front seat of a car as it slowly drives through a car wash. You make out the ocean with each flash of lightning in the dark, stormy sky. Like a Van Gogh painting, the waves and clouds swirl in white and gray and sapphire spirals. The artist once wrote, the fishermen know that the sea is dangerous and the storm terrible, but they have never found these dangers sufficient reason for remaining ashore. You imagine the brave souls made weary at sea this thought makes you all the more grateful for your safe respite from the storm. You go to the kitchen and gather some of your favorite snacks and a drink that suits your mood. You return to the living room with your dog following behind you like a shadow. And you go to your beloved nook that overlooks the beach. Built-in bookcases run the length of the wall and overflow with well-worn copies of the classics, travel books, and your favorite reads. They lend a sweetness to the salty air and the faint hint of lemongrass soap that remains on your skin. There is a wicker swinging hammock chair shaped like a pod, filled with plush pillows and a velvety blanket. It hangs from an exposed wooden beam. You climb into the chair as though nestling in a cocoon and swing back and forth 
as you enjoy your snacks. The rocking motion soothes you and you look out on the ocean. In the morning you will awaken to the sun rising over the sea after the storm has passed. Perhaps that is what makes this rare treat by Mother Nature easy to enjoy. You know with certainty it will soon end. For now you think of earlier times when you were safe from a storm. You may have experienced so many storms that you cannot recall the first time. There are nights when the rain has brought you the deepest, most soothing rest, and you happily hibernated for the night. Each hypnotic pelt of water is like a soft drum lulling you towards sleep and memorable dreams. You relish the reminder that there are things beyond your control. It urges you to recall and take care of what is in your control. Hungering down, staying safe, feeling grateful that nature has the power to shut down all your worries and all the routines and busyness of your daily life. Sometimes tasks may get in the way of you taking time for yourself to simply be. But the overpowering strength of the storm, rife with nature's beauty, has halted that routine. You savor the reprieve. You feel the wondrous enormity of the world beyond your daily existence allows you to tap deeper into your connection with the universe and your connection with your true self. The lights begin to flicker and the power goes out. You are well prepared and rise and light a tapered candle in an antique candlestick holder that rests on a stand near the bookcase. You return to the hammock chair and continue to rock yourself back and forth. You sit transfixed on the visions of palm trees conceding to the wind and rain. The palms shake off the water like a dog shaking off the ocean as she runs out of the surf. You know how good it feels to shake things off. Tonight, you hold on to nothing. You have let everything go and are simply present to the comforts of hunkering down. The candle flame burns brightly and shadows dance on the walls and the books on the shelf. The moment feels timeless. You think of all the generations of inhabitants of this coastal town who have experienced storms similar to what you're living through right now. Some of the famous novels and replications of art in your possession come from artists and writers who flocked to this beachside community because of its magical energy. They wrote and painted and photographed the varying seasons and volatile nature of the tropical climate. Bill Hybes wrote, Storms draw something out of us that calm seas don't. The soft sighs of your pup indicate it's time to go to bed. Tiredness comes over you, a 
and your body suddenly feels as if it is full of heavy, wet sand. The storm rages outside, becoming stronger and offering the soundtrack for a night of deep, healing sleep. You take the lit candle and rise, guided by the marmalade flame towards the safety of your room. Your bedroom door connects to the living room, and you open it to see your king-sized bed, perfectly made with plush linens and pillows. You walk towards the bed feel more and more tired and heavy with each step. Your room smells of lavender and the soporific aroma blends with the clean smell of rain. You set the candle on a bedstand and pull back the covers. Slender tall shadows dance on your bed and the bedroom walls. It feels so intimate and inviting. Your pet jumps onto the foot of your bed and walks in a circle a few times before settling, curled up in a ball. You climb into the bed and sink into the plush mattress covering yourself with a soft cotton blanket and sheets. The sheets are crisp, cool, and clean. The palms outside your bedroom window are rustling in the tropical winds and brush against the glass. You blow out the candle and the wick looks like an orange filament slowly succumbing to darkness. A thin trail of soft gray smoke spirals towards the ceiling. Your home is like a gift box around you, protective, offering serenity from the storm. As you listen to each tap of rain on the window and roof, you are reminded of the massaging shower. You imagine each pelt of rain corresponding to a part of your body in need of release. The sounds massage you. They bring you deeper into yourself. Each rhythmic drop like a hypnotic drum is taking you deeper and deeper down. You inhale and exhale, soaking in the moment. Nothing else before or after now concerns you. You are completely entrenched in this experience. The aliveness of being present to this moment. As if nothing before or after matters, and you take this as a practice. A practice you will maintain in your daily life more often. Living in the moment. Being present. Whipping winds wrap around your beach house as you drift further towards sleep. Knowing that tomorrow you will awaken to a new day. The sun will shine and the storm will be but a memory. But right now you are in the thick of it. Going deeper and deeper down, finding ease and peace, softly transitioning to dreams that you will remember, 
dreams that will offer you wisdom and understanding on this magical and stormy night. I am going to count you down so you may cross the bridge from your waking life into your sleeping life. And should you awaken in the night, you will find yourself easily drifting back to sleep. You will remember the sounds of the storm lulling and soothing you and reminding you that even when things are out of your control, you may still self-soothe and hold on to the comforts in your life. You continue to drift as if floating above the storm clouds in the starry night sky. Even when hidden by the clouds, the stars in the sky still shine. You are closer and closer to the deepest rest you have had in some time. The storm continues to remind you of how small your concerns have been. And this is made clear when you focus on the bigger picture. No matter the storms in your life, the stars and sun still shine brightly on the other side of the storm clouds. Or you may float towards a new landscape where new adventures await. As you inhale and exhale, your breath will lead you. The tropical storm. Comfortable in your bed, you pay attention to your breath. You inhale softly and then exhale your way another adventure ending just the same as you stay tucked beneath the underside of your bed covers and drift and wander towards sleep or towards a new landscape lighthouse in the rain Just the same as you stay tucked beneath the underside of your bed covers and drift and wander towards sleep or towards a new landscape. Lighthouse in the rain. Imagine as you are in your bed that you begin to float. Rising as you drift across your room to a wall. You are standing with your feet floating just above the floor. And in this wall a door suddenly appears that was not there before. Even in the darkness of your room at night it is defined by light streaking through the cracks like a golden sparkling rectangular outline. You reach your hand out slowly yet confidently and feel a warm brass antique doorknob in the heart of your palm. You feel engravings on it made with the craftsmanship of another time. You turn the knob and the door opens into your room, illuminating the darkness as if it's cloaked in a spotlight. This light sparkles like specks of dust in the morning sunlight. 
and curiosity lures you to cross the threshold. You find yourself floating through space, through the warm golden light as a tingling sensation forms all over your body as you cross over into another dimension and another time. You suddenly find yourself on a sandy path of a forest in 1963. You smell the salty air that is carried on a thin veil of mist that slithers through the deciduous trees of the woods. You are dressed in a plaid wool coat of the times, in comfortable slacks and boat shoes. And yet this moment feels timeless. Like in a dream within a year of dreams and change. And yet this moment feels timeless. A dream within a year of dreams and change. Lavender gray clouds cover the sky moving swiftly yet gracefully in a crisp maritime breeze. The woods are occupied by a family of deer, unafraid of your presence, as you walk on the wet sandy path and they continue to feast on local vegetation. The trees have changed into a vibrant array of deep red and fiery oranges and rich marigolds and bring life to the otherwise great rear that cloaks the woods. A storm is on the way and you feel a sense of importance. Knowing as keeper of the lighthouse, you will help guide many souls through the autumn storm. The cooler months and shorter days give you a sense of peace. As you feel ready to hibernate in the warm and safe confines of your sleeping quarters within the historic lighthouse tower. The forest opens out into a clearing that informs you that you are getting close a marker that lets you know you are getting close to the main section of the village. Mostly a vacation town, the small cottages and beach shacks are not winterized and have been cleared out for the changing season. But a few brave souls remain with you, content to be in solitude and quietude in the winter months. Like a hibernation period, those who stay will warm by the fire and enjoy the pristine landscape and the snowy beaches of winter. But now you are in the middle of fall and relish the cool nights and stillness you have spent the summer canning vegetables and fruit from your garden and smoking local delicacies to keep you nourished through this period of slowing down and hibernation. The woodlands open into dunes more than twice your height, rolling like shortbread hills. You would think you are in a desert if the beach grass and shrubs and sound of the ocean in the distance weren't there to tell you otherwise. The dunes meet the darkening sky and you can make out the tower of the black and white striped lighthouse in the distance. You listen to the surf that gets louder as the path between the dunes leads you 
to a narrow, elevated wooden boardwalk that looks out on the dusty blue ocean waves that form lacy ivory crests as the waves crash down. The tide is high and surf is rough from the storm at sea. The thin veil of mist is becoming more opaque as you walk past the white picket fences that surround the small beach bungalows that have closed for the season. It feels as if the entire barrier island is yours and that you are the keeper of light and of the island as well. This sense of purpose is soothing and healing. You know your role and fill it with pride as each day of work brings you the deepest of sleep. You walk towards the center of the village. The island is so narrow that you can see the bay to the north and the ocean to the south when you walk along the quiet main street. A car drives by. It is a Mercury Comet in signature peacock turquoise paint. It's a symbol of the times and you watch as it drives slowly by. The car is overpacked with a family of five and all their belongings. The father tips his hat in your direction, driving to make the last car ferry of the year. You smile and wave to the family as you continue to walk past closed shops an ice cream parlor, and a local grocery store. The wind increases in speed, and you push against it, looking forward to the warm respite of the lighthouse. At the edge of town, you come to the narrow sandy path that winds through tall, honey-hued reeds that shuffle in the breeze as their feathery tops brush against one another. It's like being in the middle of a maze that you know well, aware of every turn and bend that leads you to the lighthouse property. It always seems to take your breath away, to take in its beauty especially on a day like today when the vibrant white and black stripes are bold against the grays and blues of the sky and sea. You walk on a stone path that you created yourself over the summer and feel proud of all the little efforts that made the safe haven a home for you and a beacon for others. There is a garden with flowers still in bloom, namely hydrangeas that look like vibrant powder puffs in shades of cornflower blue and raspberry pink and pastel purple. You hear the waves crashing against the black rocks of the shore and you walk around the lighthouse to take in the crisp, briny air and beauty of the arriving storm. You can see the black and dark gray bellied storm clouds illuminated by flashes of lightning out at sea. The torrential rains are still far out at sea and look like pewter swarms connecting the sky to the white caps of the stormy waters. You feel a drop or two of rain begin to fall. The drops are big and cool, and when one lands on your lips, it tastes like the sea. You are ready to head indoors and walk towards the heavy metal door 
pulling it open and entering into the foyer. You smell the lavender that hangs above the door that you handpicked in June and dried in the sun on a perfect summer's day. The changing of seasons and the variety of weather on the island has created layers of memories that you deeply enjoy. The beauty is unlimited and can be found in every variation of weather. A fluffy gray cat comes to meet you, rubbing against your shins as you lean down to pet her. The walls are brick and a winding white metal staircase leads up through your sleeping quarters and to the top of the tower. The rhythm of the day is similar as before dusk you climb the stairs with your cat in tow, going further and further up. You feel the strength in your legs and the cool dampness of the lighthouse that will change once you illuminate the wicks. As you reach the top, you first go to inspect the Fresnel lens and the many prisms that you clean each morning. You run your hand along the entrancing design, like a greenhouse of prisms that stands taller than you. It consists of concentric grooves that refract light so a solid beam of light may cut through the fog and illuminate a path for the most weary out at sea. You trim the wick and check the fuel before lighting the wick and watching as the flame burns brightly. You hand crank the weights to the top so they may descend again and cause the gears to spin the beacon of light and flashes across the ocean. You stay for the requisite time to make sure the light does not burn out and you look out the windows to the fog rolling in, watching as the light cuts through the fog. Its rhythm is captivating and hypnotic and lulling you into a relaxed state. You sit on the wooden floor as your cat nestles beside you, purring and cuddling as you pet her. The storm rolls in and you hear thunder rolling across the island. The sky darkens as the purple-black storm clouds roll in and you begin to reminisce. The silvery mist of the fog becomes like a movie screen where you play out memories of the beach. Your first time in the ocean. The first time your bare feet stepped into a tidal pool. You see yourself surrounded by those you love in this timeless memory and sensation of belonging as you watch the sunset over the bay. The idea of time eludes you as if all these memories brought to life are happening at once. You feel just the same in 1963 as you feel in your waking life. You feel the essence of who you are, no matter where or when you go in time. The rain begins to splat against the metal roof of the lighthouse, soporific and calming. You are warmed by the burning wick, the flames licking against the glass enclosure 
Your face is warmed by the amber glow and you ready yourself to descend and take a nap before you will rise and check on the flame again. You walk down the spiral stairs, your hand sliding down the cool metal rail as your fluffy cat races ahead. You arrive at the second floor to your sleeping quarters. The room is quaint and you feel embraced by the curves of the brick walls. There is a bed on the opposite side of the room with an oil lantern that you light with a set of matches kept in your pocket. The lantern illuminates the room with a warm glow. There is a cast iron wood stove upon which you place a tea kettle full of water. The flat black surface is perfect for cooking and heating water. You stoke the fire and add another log to the smoldering embers left from earlier in the day. The log soon catches, crackling and popping in a percussive sound that marries the sounds of the pelting rain and whistling winds of the storm outside. You remove a can of food from the cupboard for your cat, emptying it onto a fine china plate. She deserves the best as much as you, for she is your loyal companion through the quietest and even the stormiest of nights. You remove an antique teacup and saucer bestowed to you from a grateful passenger on a ship when stranded at sea. You were very helpful in that rescue and the appreciation was paid forward with this china. You run your finger around the gold trim of the cup as if for good luck before you place a tea bag in it. The water boils and you remove it from the wood stove, pouring it into the teacup and smelling the sweet aroma of the tea as its redolence wafts on the steam. You sweeten it with local honey that you harvested from beehives you looked after during the summer, knowing it will boost your immunity and strength. You take the tea and saucer to an upholstered armchair that is overstuffed and well-worn. You sink into it and peer out the lookout window to see flashes of the lighthouse that are in competition with the streaks of lightning that come with the storm. You look to black and white photos on the walls Photos of you in various seasons on the island in the fashionable attire of the 1960s. You are standing with guests who visited the lighthouse in summer. The ladies in cotton summer dresses and white gloves. The men in linen suits. In other photos, you are wearing your signature uniform. You are reminded of the busy summers, so crowded with visitors that you are entertained and treated like a hero. As if carried on the fog, you hear the conversations from joyous outdoor dinners of summers past, where beneath the stars, swarmed by fireflies, and enlivened by the laughter of children running around with sparklers. You wish the moments would never leave. They stay with you, like all the warm feelings of love and connection 
that help you greatly appreciate this time for reflection. Your eyes feel tired as you polish off your tea and rise, walking to an old trunk that contains your most precious and most often used belongings. You pull out a pair of pajamas that are meant to be worn on a cool night. You change into them feeling warm already as you walk to the bed and remove the heavy patchwork quilt that you purchased from a craft festival on the island years ago. It cloaks you in warmth and memories of splendor. Your cat jumps atop the quilt, nestling in the crook of your arm as she kneads the fabric and settles in. You feel perfectly safe and content as the storm continues and you drift to sleep. The sounds of the rain against metal and the blustering winds offer a soundtrack for sleep. There is no safer place to be than in a lighthouse that has stood tall against every storm to come over centuries and still remains. It continues to pour light onto the darkness with buttercream beams that glow on a sable blanket of nightfall. You inhale, still smelling the salty air and the sweetness of your tea before you exhale and sink deeper into the antique bed. You drift towards maritime dreams, envisioning the light inside of you that sparkles in your eyes on the happiest of days, that pours from your heart center when you connect with those you love most. Nestled with your cat, high atop the island, you fall deeper and deeper into this feeling of relaxation and safety. You enjoy your own company and the rhythm of life you have found as a light keeper. With this sense of accomplishment, you feel the tiredness that comes from a productive, active, and well-spent day. Drifting down towards sleep, floating like a buoy atop the cascading waves, you are floating and drifting in the sensation of fluidity. And I am going to count you down to a night of healing, tranquil sleep. Ten, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Finding peace, finding stillness, finding sleep. It's time to dream away. Good night.